Luke chapter 17. Then said he unto his disciples. Well, he started with the disciples in, in chapter 16 and the Pharisees butted in. So he deals with the Pharisees about hell. Okay, back to the disciples. <laughs> See, Jesus was normal life. He's talking to somebody. Somebody interrupted. Okay, I'll deal with you. Okay, now back to the disciples. And thanks to the interruption of the Pharisees, we have the eyewitness testimony of a man in hell. So thanks to religion, Jesus has told us about hell. So when you're dealing with somebody who has a religion, say thank you very much. Because now we have the story about hell, whether you believe it or not. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him that whom they come. It was, I don't, I don't know how to guess this, but Abraham Lincoln had to die. Woe to Booth that pulled the trigger. I would say Kennedy had to die, but whoever pulled that trigger. Woe be to that person, whoever it was. There's so many stories. Man has to die. You better not be part of it. You better not be called a murderer. Now, he's on his way. This is about 33 AD. He's on his way to Calvary. Woe be to the Jewish Pharisees that will turn him over to Roman government. Woe be the Judas that will go to the Pharisees and the priests and get the money. Now the Bible records that somebody will sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Woe be to Judas who we know did it. The scriptures say somebody had to do it. It better not have been James, Peter, John, Andrew, you name all this. It better not have been one of them, but it was Judas. Somebody had to turn Jesus over to Roman government to be crucified and not stoned. Woe be to the priests that did it. I myself, I don't know. I may be a God may have destined me to be a martyr for Jesus Christ. Woe be the person that did it. Or maybe I die because I take a pill and somebody at the factory put poison in it. That's happened. Woe be to the person that did that. Woe be the person that gets drunk and goes on the road and kills somebody. DUI. Death has to happen, but woe be the person that caused it. Offenses. You offended me. We've seen that word through Luke. We've seen that word through Mark. We've seen that word through Matthew. We're talking about a proper offense. Not just, you know, your belly wasted panty waist. You don't have no guts, no spine. People were offended of Jesus. Jesus is God. Woe to you that were offended by Jesus. Because guess what? Your outlook doesn't look too good after what we just read. It were better for him that a millstone, a very heavy rock, were hanged about his neck. That's not where it belongs. A millstone was used to, to grind corn, grains, meal. It's not something you wear around your neck. You know, people will put a, a mustard seed around their neck. People will put Jesus on the cross around their neck. Why don't they put a millstone? Why don't you ever see someone walking around with a millstone? Come on, that's Bible. And he cast into the sea. Smet shoes for your neck. Then that he should offend one of these little ones. Uh-oh, wait a minute, we... We've come back to the children that we've said in Matthew and Mark. And the context is we, we just go right into this. Something has happened and you need Matthew 18. You need the gospel. You need the, the scripture with scripture. Because we have seen that even the disciples themselves, when they brought children to Jesus, get them kids out of here. And Jesus like, whoa, no, 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 no. Bring them to me. Blessed are the children. There are people bringing children to Jesus and people are hating it. We are in a generation, you ask my wife, you ask my daughter, there are people who will not bring their children to Jesus. 
and bring them to all kinds of other messes. They'll bring them to Santa Claus. Take heed to yourselves. Offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. You better not bring your child up in religion, parent. If you're going to bring your children up in Santa Claus, in religion, atheism, uh, whatever, out there, anything but Jesus Christ, that Bible says right now you will be judged and you had better put a millstone and kill yourself rather than bring your children to Jesus Christ. How about adding that to the great white throne judgment? How about adding that to the judgment seat of Christ when a Christian doesn't bring his children to the Lord as they're supposed to? Let's stand in judgment for that one. I never steal. I never killed anybody. What'd you do with your children? Hmm? What about you? Uh, school teachers. What'd you do with your children? All the children that you had under you. What'd you do with them? If it wasn't Jesus Christ, you just might have cast yourself cement shoes and a cement necklace and cast yourself into the sea. How many students have sat under a teacher and they have not, you cannot, you will not bring a Bible into the school in Jesus Christ in prayer. Woe be to you! And we just saw this weekend a nice escalate of sin and partonage for teachers. Made me sick. And by the way, you know what? I was almost like walking through a church, a modern church. I told that to my wife. Brown's house. Swan, we walked through all that, and I told my, I told my wife it looks like we we just walked through a church house. And I can name you churches here and where I come from that had carnivals and rides. Take heed to yourself if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. If he repent, there's that word repent again. That's an important word in the Bible. Forgive him. If he were to repent to God, forgive him. Hard to forget, though, isn't it? Let's come on. Let's be honest. I'm a man. People don't think they said they're sorry. I can't. I got a crisis with that right now. I forgive, but man, I can't forget against one person I love very dear. But that action you did, I can forgive you, but man, I can't forget. You've done damage. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Now remember we read this early, Peter still, how many times are Now is this the kind of repent that, you know what? You know, if I, if I went over here and smacked my wife right now, I'm sorry. I smacked her again, I'm sorry. Is that the kind of repent? Or is it in the middle of the night, my eyeball hits her in the eye? <laughs> I'm sorry. And I roll over and I smack her in the tooth. <laughs> Listen, I'm just awkward sleeper. You know that. I'm sorry. What do you think, the, what do you think the, the aspect of this is? This is truly accidental. Listen, I didn't mean to do you no harm. It happened. This is not purpose. There's in the law. We're still in the law. That if you do a sin preemptuously, you plan to do it. There was no forgiveness. So with the law in the context here, it's accidental. You could be working in a cubicle office with somebody. You know, somebody, what they do irritates you. It's their habit. And they're trying to stop. But it keeps coming back because it's been a habit. And you only deal with them eight hours, and they keep saying they're sorry. Forgive them. If they're trying to around you, forgive them. I've had many people come up to me because they know where I stand in the Bible and God and Jesus. They'll cuss and say, oh, I'm sorry, Stalin. Yeah, hey. They'll go cussing out anywhere else, but they've asked, hey, listen, I'm sorry around you. I don't even get that today. They'll just outright cuss and say whatever they want from me, knowing who I am. I praise God from the old days. Let the apostles said, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Now we just dealt with being hurt by someone over and over and over. Now they come up, increase our faith. 
What does that have to do with forgiving somebody? I'll tell you exactly what it had to do. Let's change the subject, Lord. The apostles, the disciples, were men just like us, and there's certain things we don't like to talk about. Evidently, Peter had a conscience with us, because he's the one who walked up to Jesus. Well, what if my brother sent me seven? I forget exactly what he said, but Jesus says 70 times 7. The Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, wear it round your neck. It's got to be in there. How many people? Do, how many? You ever been into a Christian bookstore and there they are hanging mustard seed? Get a mustard seed Bible bookmark. Get a mustard seed ring. Get a, is that what Jesus said? If you had faith as a grain of mustard, seed, what's the illustration? A grain of mustard seed. If you had just the tiniest little bit of that faith, he didn't say make a market of it. Ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. How's that for faith? Now, who's got that faith? Jesus already illustrated on the way to on the way to Calvary, he walked up to a fig tree, curse you for not having no fruit. <laughs> so the only one that's got faith as a size of to start off as a mustard seed is the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't listen. Don't go buy your faith plaques, your faith pictures, your faith whatever. You ain't got it. Sorry, that's the words of Jesus. Look at a mustard seed. Look how small it is. We ain't got it and he's talking to a bunch of men who are going to set the world on fire and that's even the testimony of the unsaved people man they turned the world upside down and Paul's like get rid of this thing get rid of this thing get rid of this thing. Lord Paul don't you know that it's all gonna be good in it? I don't care but it hurts Lord Help us, we're drowning. Didn't I tell you when we get to the other side? No, we're going to drown, okay? God will be killed with the 12 disciples in a boat under the water of Galilee. God will be killed. <laughs> you ever think about it like that? But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding ca cattle, doing farm work, will say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to me. Guy's been working all day. He comes in, go have a meal. And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. What American will follow that thing? The guy's been working on the field all day. He comes inside, the master says, Feed me. Put your servant clothes on, get my dinner. And when I am done eating, when I am done drinking, and I'm finished, then you can take care of yourself. What American will follow that one? We just got finished with the un unjust ser servant with an interruption by the Pharisees. Of, and then we go into hell, then we're back to service again. Talking to the disciples. He's, he's explaining to the disciples what service is because the book of Acts is going to be all about service. Illustration here is it's not about you. It's about the Lord. It's about the master. It's about Jesus Christ I want to go. I want to go fishing fishing season starts Sunday. I don't care You belong in church Remember what it said about being a disciple unless you take up your own cross unless you hate those that will not follow me You cannot be my disciple and here's another thing about being a disciple you can't take care of yourself while you're supposed to take care of me, the Lord. Does he not thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. 
Guy feeds the cows. He's out there plowing. He comes in, prepares the dinner and everything, gets his drink. The master's not obligated to say thank you. That's the, that's the servant's job. He gets a paycheck. He gets a living. That's the thank you. But I don't want to dig. I don't want to beg. So likewise ye, ye, who? Disciples, verse 1. When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Weep with those that weep. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Love the brethren. Put your sins under the blood. Those are commandments of God. When you've done those things that are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which is our duty to do. Oh, look at all the people I brought to church. No, that's, that's your duty. Stop praising it. Because you haven't done more than what God expected you to do. We sin every day of our life. We sin even when we're doing something for God. Come on. I've looked at some people while I've been ministering to them, preaching. To them. That guy's an idiot. God's like, hey, I died for him. Remember John 3.16? Remember that? Now shut up and preach. Get that rotten attitude out of you. I told you go in all the world to preach the gospel. I didn't say call them idiots. But Lord, I didn't call it idiot. I heard your heart say it. Remember that? Remember what, remember what we've been reading? Come on, I'm talking about myself here. My thoughts. My words and my thoughts will be judged. And I get, oh, I, I'm a street preacher. God's a dip. Yeah, sure. Let's take your thoughts and battle out with what your words were. Really? You got faith, Mr. Hayward? How come you looked at those people like they're not even listening? They don't even care. Huh? What about that? Okay, you they don't care? They don't they're not concerned of what you're saying? Two little girls, you wanna step up and, and show them how much you that you're not listening to me? Come on, show that guy how wonderful he is preaching the gospel that no one's listening to. Show him how much. Will you? Oh, now you're balling. Now you care. Now you care. You didn't care a few minutes ago. Come on, I ain't got the faith of a mustard seed, and I'm doing what the Bible says. Yeah. And he's preaching to the disciples what, what they're going to do. Peter has a hard time with it. The angel has to smack him across the face. You get up. Yeah, I know you're in prison for Jesus, but I don't want you here. Get up. I want you to go to the Gentile. Oh, no, Lord, not. He's still telling God what to do. If he had that faith, let's go, Lord, where? Plug in my GPS and let's go to Cornelius' house. I will make sure I, I go straight, the fastest way to get there. No toll bridges. Come on. We say, oh, going all the world, and then we go knocking on doors. and Yeah, man, glory to God. God loves us. That is our duty. That is our commandment. The only thing I see extra outside the church age is when you give to help a fellow say That's not a duty. That's not commanded. God says, I love a cheerful giver. You ain't going to give it cheerfully. Don't even give it. That's a command. A command. Listen, you're not going to help that brother out. You're going to be grunge about that. Don't even do it. Oh, you're doing it out of your heart. You really love him. You really care. That's not duty. That's against the human nature. Everything else? I pray for everybody. You're supposed to pray. You know what? You don't pray enough. <laughs> you know what? You don't go in all, you know, all the world and preach enough. Come on. Let's look at the time we spend with God. Let's look at the time we spend with ourselves. Let's look at the money that we spend on God. Let's look at the money we spend on pets. Or electronic goods. And keep them going. Do you really spend more money on missionaries or batteries around December 25th to whenever those toys get dead and dull and you don't use them no more in January? Hmm? If it's our duty to do it, that means it's our job. 
And God only blesses us rewards for, for doing what our duty is to do. Because even when you go work for an employer, he gives you a paycheck. Oh, chapter 16, a guy who wasted the money doesn't get nothing. He loses his job. See, we only had an intermission of hell because of the Pharisees. But Jesus has gone right back to stewardship. It's your duty. Imagine a Christian born again is going to be at the judgment seat of Christ has not done what God has told him to do. He is the unjust steward. You will have to give account for your wasting. You won't get a paycheck. What's the paycheck in eternity for a Christian? A crown and a reward. Well done. That's your reward. And some people are going to grumble and complain. I worked all day and all you gave me was a penny. I worked all longer than that person. I just got the crown of life and they got the crown of life too. What? What is? It's your duty. You were hired to go in the vineyard and pick grapes. Stop griping. Stop complaining. You don't want to do it? Get out of the vineyard and don't get paid. Get out of God's service and don't get a reward. But the church has got the mindset that God owes me. How great we are. How great. No, I thought it was how great thou art. I haven't heard that song song in a while. Oh, but the songs we, I, me, I, me, minus Jesus Christ. In the hymnals of the modern church today. There's no Jesus. Some of those songs about love, I could write them down and give them to my wife. My Oh, dear, that is so gracious. These modern music songs. Ooh, that was good. So likewise, which ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We haven't done all we can do. We have done that which was our duty to do. End of lesson from, from Luke 16. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, here we go, that he passed through the midst of Samaria. Ew, those people, the slums, the ghettos, don't walk through that neighborhood. If you drive through there, roll the windows, lock the doors. Like, that's really going to protect you. <laughs> Every one of that, lock the windows. And Galilee, so he's up north. Heading south. And as he entered into a certain village. There it is again. There met him ten men that were lepers. That's not the animal. Leprosy. Which stood afar off. Look at They're obeying the law. They are staying away from the people. According to the law. But they're watching. And they lifted up their voices because they stood afar off. He said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He had to yell it out. You know what people hate about me? My loud voice. Shut up. No. I'm a man that was a leper cleared by Jesus Christ. I'm going to lift my voice up. And when he saw them, he said unto them, now, you would think that he would have to lift his voice up too, wouldn't you? You always think that Jesus Christ is just jelly preserve, you know, just, oh, everybody is love. It's, you know? But let's see what would Jesus have to do according to what the leopards did, okay? When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself unto the priest! No one would think Jesus would have tone like that. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. No one thinks Jesus would have to raise his voice. If he can preach in a boat on a beach and everybody can hear him, I don't think he spoke with little flowers and little butterflies. <laughs> What's wrong, Jesus? I just had a caterpillar crawl up my leg. <laughs> Jesus was Pilate said, Behold the man. A lot of people are going to be shocked when they, Christians, when they see the real Jesus. 
and they're having been taught that he still got the nail prints in the in his hands and his feet and his the, uh, the spear in his side. They haven't been taught that, and yet the Bible says. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice glorifying God. <laughs> Sally, keep your voice down. No, I'm glorifying God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You're just going to encourage me to be louder. And fell down on his face at his feet. He ran to Jesus. He, he had to be far off before. He just see this guy running and yelling, praising God and falling at the feet of Jesus. You imagine what some of the people in the crowd thought? <laughs> Look at that idiot. <laughs> they wouldn't do that much. Or, oh, boy. They wouldn't. <laughs> Look at that guy. You won't believe I saw this guy with Jesus today. Man, the guy with the, he had leprosy. You know, because he just went. <laughs> oh. oh. People are idiots. Giving him thanks. P.S. He was a Samaritan. Now that was a kick to the Jew. This. I can say the word because it's in the Bible. This is a bastard child. He's half Jewish and half Gentile. That's what he is. He's an outcast. No priest. No Jew. Peter would not have anything to do with him. And yet Jesus took him in. You had ten virgins, five were good. You had ten le leopards, one was right. That's the few. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten coins? Jesus knew how many. He took an account like the book of Numbers. There was ten of you. You know that? The day you got saved, wasn't there four others with you that went to that camp meeting? Well, yeah. Weren't you, your mom, your dad, you, and your brothers and siblings in church? Yeah. Jesus takes account in numbers. He's the greatest bookkeeper of all. And if you don't think so, you have not read numbers. You have not read Chronicles. And the books were open, Revelation 20. I bet you those books have dates and numbers. But where are the nine? That's an interesting question. That's this guy. Like, this guy really has authority over him. And they are not, they, there are, phew, there are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this P.S. stranger. He's not Jewish. That was a kick to the Jews. You know, didn't the Queen of Sheba came to Solomon? Oh, don't say that, Jesus. Didn't the Ninevites with Jonah? Oh, oh the centurion. Oh, stop it. And he said unto him, Arise. He's still on his knees. He's still at the feet of Jesus. He will not leave the feet of Jesus to arise, go thy way. Oh, here's a faith illustration. Thy faith has made thee whole. He just answered the disciples' prayer. If they had waited, they would have had their, their prayer, I mean, their question answered. And when he was demanded ooh, of the Pharisees, ooh, outright threats. Why is there any time something good happens, these Pharisees will come in and ruin the moment? This guy is rejoicing. He is cleansed. He's going home to his, wrap his arms around his wife or his children or his mother or his father. I can touch you. 
If he's married, can you imagine? I don't want to be unclean or anything, but can you just imagine that, that newly night to be with his wife again, finally? He couldn't touch anybody. He couldn't be around anybody. Imagine the time he had that day with his children at the park, picking them up, hugging them, kissing them. He couldn't do that before. His mom could come up and put her kiss on, on his little forehead, my little boy. He's not unclean to the Jews anymore, only but being a Samaritan. He can shake people's hands now. He's unquarantined. What about the other nine? So here comes the Pharisees. The man of the Pharisees. When the kingdom of God should come. It's right there. You're looking at it. I guess like Jehovah Witnesses. They didn't believe Jesus was God either. Did you just get that? There's a Jehovah Witness. When's the kingdom of God coming? You are staring it in the face. Explain to me, Mr. Pharisee. Come on, explain to me. Document when the last time outside of Jesus' life and ministry, a Pharisee, a, a, a leopard man or woman came to you and said, I'm cleansed. Come on, document that, please. Come on, show me. You only dusted off Leviticus 13, 14 because Jesus had already brought a man to you that had been cleansed of leprosy. Other than that, come on, document it. Show me, please. Come on. And you have the nerve to say to the one that healed these guys, healed these people, that the devils are answered to, that is feeding people miraculous. You have the nerve to walk up to his face and show us the kingdom of God. Where have I met people like that? They're right down the wall. They come to my, they come to my door and try to sell me a bunch of gar garbage. And when I ask them, is Jesus God? No. Here they are. Jehovah Witnesses is nothing new. These guys, aren't they Jehovah Witnesses? Aren't they speaking for God? Didn't Paul have a zeal for Jehovah God? And wasn't he 100% wrong? Didn't he go knocking on the doors of the, of the Christians and to bring them out? That's why they knock on my door. They think they can drag me away. They can't. There you go. He answers them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, even though they're staring at it. They've just seen, I'm going to say, at least one leper guy get healed and praise God. I don't know about the other nine. None of them says anything about the other nine. Neither shall they say, Lo, here. Or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you, a spiritual kingdom. And wh what does that talk about? We just read in Ezekiel today, I will give you a new spirit. Had they received Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as God, God would have given them that, that spirit of God. And it would be within them. And the spirit of God would work out through them. But it didn't happen because they rejected him. They called him Satan, Beelzebub. But when Jesus Christ comes back to the remnant of Israel, wherever they're hiding, sell Petra, at the end of Jacob's trouble, they will get a new spirit and it will come in. The kingdom of God will come in through the Jews. As Jesus King and David the Prince setting up the millennial kingdom, God, Jesus, heaven, fruitfulness, and homes in the land, glory to God, animals cursed, removed, except for the snake. But it's been 2016 years since because of disbelief and rejecting God, Jesus Christ. Things would have been a lot better if they received Christ now. History would be so much better. I would probably never have been born or born and be eternally saved. Because we've been behind Jacob's trouble. We would be behind the millennium already in glory. Had they received Jesus Christ as their Savior. But they didn't. And he said unto his disciples. Go back to the disciples. The days will come. When ye shall desire to see one of the days. Question mark. <laughs> I have no idea. Of the Son of Man. And ye shall not see. Isn't that great hope? 
You shall desire it, but it ain't going to come. And they shall say to you, Luke 21, 8, Matthew 24, 23, Mark 13, 21. See here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. Jesus is now warning of deceivers. For as lightning, sunrise, the light that lighteth out of one part under the heaven, east, and shineth to the other part under heaven, west, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. 1 Timothy 6.15 At the end of the great tribulation period, all is dark. Here comes a light. It's going to come out of the east. And it's going to light the whole world. See, a lot of people worship the sun right now, but that's Baal. That ain't Jesus Christ. They get all naked and brown themselves for Baal. And we've even seen a sign down here in the church. Foolishness. But first, uh-oh, must he suffer many things. Here he goes. He's going now to tell them about his death, burial, and resurrection. And be rejected of this generation, 922. Here he goes. He's warning them. He's going to Calvary. As in the days of Noe, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Isn't that kind of interesting? Up to what? Two years ago? That men are building arcs now? I don't know if that has anything to do with the scriptures. We're told nowhere to build an ark. But there are three arcs, maybe four right now, on this planet. Maybe one's gone. I heard one time a guy in California was building one to when California went off in the ocean. I, I, I heard, I never seen, never saw anything about it. But I know that there's an ark here in America on the East Coast. And I know there's a mark, uh, ark somewhere up in Europe somewhere. That's all I know. In De Noah's day, there were ark. <laughs> kind of funny, isn't it? I'm not dating nothing. They did eat. Do you eat? Yeah. They drank. Do you drink? They marry wives. Aren't there marriages going on? They were given the marriage, and their fathers giving their daughters away. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, what did we read from Genesis with that? Unbelief in God. Though a man preached to them, though they had all these animals come. There were signs to the Gentiles. There was no Jews in Noah's time. What was the sign? Here comes husband and wife, animal. No children. Did you get that? Only mama and papa bear, no baby bear. May have to scold the rabbits a little while, but only mama and daddy rabbit. Now, stop it. Hold yourself for a moment. Will you get on that ark? Go to sleep. Trying to be clean. It's funny. Only mom and dad bird. But they were marrying. They were eating. They were drinking. They were giving the marriage until the, the judgment came. It's going to happen. One of these normal days, the church will be raptured. What normal day would that be? I have no idea. I don't even think Noah knew it was going to happen. He just knew it was 40 days and 40 nights. You know what I know? I know seven years of tribulation after I'm called out of here. That's all I know. Date? I have no idea. I don't think Noah had any idea either. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat. Do you eat? Okay. They did drink. Did you drink? Okay. They bought. Do you buy things? They don't have a store like Walmart. Yeah, so what? They bought things. They sold. Do you sell things? Yeah, a lot for sale. I see it everywhere. Property. Sorry. They planted. Did you plant things? They built it. They're living. But they have no God. 
But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Noah went willingly. Lot didn't. He had to be dragged out. Lot did not know the day and hour, but he knew the day came. Those angels said, got up in the morning. Come on, let's go. We can't do this until you're out of here. But Abraham had no idea. Abraham was praying. But they were marrying, they were drinking, they were eating, they were buying, they were selling. They just did not have God. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The second, he has gone from the from the crucifixion to the second advent in one, two, three, four, five, five verses. 26, 27, 28. And 30, well, 28, 26, 27, 28, 29 is the church age and tribulation. Verse 30 is the second advent of Jesus Christ. After he's died, after he's, re as he's rejected, died, buried, and rose from the grave. Look at that. There was no church age in those verses. He went from the death, from the resurrection, to here I come again. In that day. He which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house. It's not Santa Claus. Up in the house, dead, click, click, click. I just shot, oh Saint Nick. Let him not come down and take it away. And he that is in the field, let him no wise, like, let him likewise not return back. Don't go for material things. Get on the run. Now we are in. The three and a half years, the great tribulation, the abomination that lies desolate, spoken of Daniel. We've gone from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to the second advent. Now we're at the three and a half year point of tribulation. No wonder they didn't get it. He's messing with their minds because there's no belief. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. we got to rightly divide. Scripture will, scripture will put this in its proper order. No scripture with scripture, and you got a mess. Jesus will die. He'll be rejected. He's coming back. And then, oh man, what do you do with it? Likewise, not return back. Remembers Lot's, remember Lot's wife. Now that puts us back in the contents of the tribulation. After... He just spoke about death, burial, and resurrection, the second coming. Now let's go back to Lot. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back. She's a Morton Salt girl. It's raining, and yet she's holding an umbrella, and inside is salt. Come on. You don't believe in the Bible, and yet you hold the, Mo the Morton Salt container in your hand? Why? got to be some Bible to that whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it tribulation preparation getting ready for the zombie apocalypse you're gonna die you're gonna be just like them uh, brainless whosoever shall lose his wife life shall preserve it leave everything behind and head down to sell a peach you ain't got nothing. You almost become like Paul, but Paul had some parchments. <laughs> Lot, only thing we can see was he had two daughters. Noah did better. Man, he had his family. He had animals. And God was pleased when he came out of that boat. Ark. Lot is in a cave. He's produced two babies by incest. And I don't think God ever spoke to him again. But the Bible says he was just. I tell you, this is Jesus speaking, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. How do I know that's not the rapture of the church? All right, let's be clean. I sleep with my wife, right? My wife is saved, right? Is there anything? Yeah. You're saved. I'm saved, right? So when the Lord comes, he's going to leave one of us behind. That's not true. 
Something may be in the future. Remember, beds were also couches too. But if it's a church rapture, those both those men are saved, they're both going. God is not going to leave me or my wife, one of us, behind because of this passage of the church rapture. All those that are in Christ, dead or alive, are going. Sorry, this is not church age. Two men shall be in the field, the other one, and the one shall be taken, and the other left. They're both saved, one's going to go and one's going to stay? I don't think so. You would pervert the scriptures. You have not rightly divided the scriptures. This would be telling you that half the population is going to disappear. In the tribulation period. If you take these two accounts. There is a, tri there is a tribulation rapture. Looks like half the people will go. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said to him, Whatsoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Revelation 12, 14. Oh. These people that are raptured, they don't go to heaven. They go to land. <laughs> Remember Ezekiel kept being pulled by the spirit by his hair? Abraham, I mean not Abraham, was it Lot pulled by the angels to another spot? Did the spirit guide Noah to a place where he was not in the beginning? On top of a mountain? These people will be pulled to a place to protect them and it's not heaven. When I'm raptured, guess where the Bible says I'm going? I'm going to the clouds. Guess where I'm going after that? After the general assembly of the entire church. We're going to go see Jesus. And then we're going to go marry Jesus. After the judgment seat of Christ. So you can't go running into this verse and say, look, there's a rapture. Not for the church. There's a rapture, but not for us. Don't put the church in there. It doesn't belong. Because if you're married... And your spouse is saved. What are you going to do with that passage? Noah took his family. Lot took his family. One woman disagreed, disobeyed and turned us off. But two of his daughters went. Be careful. Study to show that I self approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. And if you say this is a church rapture, you will be ashamed. Because if I taught that right now, my wife or I will be left behind by either one of us both being saved. I'd be defying scripture. I will be teaching a heresy. Be careful. 